Welcome to Hopewell Christian Fellowship this morning. I see uh, some people are still sleeping off their turkey comas. But uh, good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Good to be with family and friends. Good to be thankful this uh, Thanksgiving weekend and uh, coming up on Christmas and the holidays. But uh, what a good time to be in the house of the Lord. Let's, uh, let's stand together as we enter into worship and invite the Lord's presence. Lord, we welcome you this morning. We thank you for your goodness, Lord. We come together this morning with hearts that are filled with gratitude towards you, all that you are, all that you have done, all that you will do. Lord, as we come and we lift our praise to you, would you inhabit the praises of your people? Fill this place with your presence, Lord, so that we are changed into your image and likeness by the Lord who is the Spirit. Glory to your name we pray in Jesus' name. Let's worship the Lord together. I just invite you to come forward if you want to dance.
and everybody woke up. Okay, everybody, you're all awake. We want you to come and free you this morning. So come out of your chairs. Come down here to the front. You know, that's a, that's a powerful song. It's not just a song, it's a declaration. That's a declaration for the times that we're living in. And so we, we love freedom here. I want you to know that. And I said to Kyle, I said, Kyle, go ahead and invite him down here. So he didn't do it without my knowing. So I'm just inviting you to come out if you enjoy that freedom. Don't be stuck in your chair. There's no glue. There's no glue in those chairs. Amen. So, and if you haven't come out before, now's a good day to come on out of your chairs and just take a new step before the Lord and say, Lord, I'm going to enjoy the freedom of the Lord today. In Jesus' name, amen. Did you feel the mountains tremble? Did you hear the oceans roar? When the people rose to sing of Jesus Christ, the saving one, did you feel? Did you feel?
is holding up the moon who is peeling back the darkness with the burning light with the burning light of noon who is standing who is standing on the mountain on the earth below who is bigger who is bigger than the heavens and the lover of my soul creator God creator God he is Yahweh the great I am he is Yahweh the Lord of all he is Yahweh Sharon, who's of Sharon, he is Yahweh, the righteous son, he is Yahweh, the three in one, he is Yahweh. Who is he? Who is he that makes me happy? Who is he that brings me peace? brings me comfort it turns it turns the bitter into sweet who is stirring who is stirring up my passion who is rising up in me who is filling who is filling up my heart everything I need in Creator God. Creator God, He is Yahweh. The great I am, He is Yahweh. Lord of all, He is Yahweh. Who's of Sharon? Who's of Sharon? He is Yahweh. The righteous Son, He is Yahweh. Three in one, He is Yahweh. Son, you are Yahweh. Three in one, you are Yahweh. 
let heaven come. Lord, we welcome you in this place. We welcome the presence, the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we give to you the honor and the glory that is due your name. Our lives belong to you. All that we are, all that we have, all that we ever will be, Lord, it's all for you. Come, Lord Jesus, rule and reign in our hearts place, in every place that is under our influence, Lord, rule and reign, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus, fill us with your spirit and your power, Lord, so, Lord, we might spread your kingdom's glory and influence. Christian fellowship this morning. We welcome you into the house of the Lord this morning. Turn and greet someone and bless them in the name of the Lord Jesus. Good morning. We welcome you all to Hope All Christian Fellowship this morning. So glad that you're here on this 26th day of November. A couple of things. Uh, first of all, if you would take out of your bulletin your connection card, let us know that you're here this morning. If uh, you're a regular here, you know what to do. Just Put your name there. The number of people from your household that are present today helps us to maintain some sort of a, a sense of attendance. Um, if you're new with us this morning, if you wouldn't mind filling out the guest information on there, we'd like to have a chance to get to know you a little bit better. Uh, place on the back to communicate with the church office about things, share your praise reports, your prayer requests. Want to mention a couple of things that uh, a couple of things that need registration by next Sunday, December third. Um, the ladies' dinner sign up. The, I think it's dinner and a movie. Um, there is a place you can register and pay online for that, and you should do so by next Sunday. Also, there is a singles Christmas dinner on the sixteenth, and uh, also register for that by December third. I'm assuming that that registration sheet would be out in the foyer um, on the table. Um, as we approach the holiday season, next Sunday begins Advent, and we have these invitations, uh, a star journey to the unexpected. You can take these invitations. You can invite people. You know, we studies have been done that show that most people would go to church if they were invited. So Christmas time is a good time to do that, um, to just take an invitation, invite your friends, your neighbors. Um, we have some friends coming uh, on Christmas Eve Sunday, and uh, just take the, take the opportunity to invite people to church during this month that uh, maybe otherwise don't attend church. That would be a beautiful thing to do. We have um, a video uh, that introduces that theme, which will be beginning next Sunday. If you could go ahead and play that.
All right, there you have it, a little taste of what's to come. With each of those messages, there's a video presentation on uh, Christmas Eve, that Sunday service. We have video, we have drama, we have music, we have children's participation and candle lighting. We have a little bit of everything coming up, so uh, please um, feel free to invite friends and family. The ushers would come to receive our offering this morning, and then... Uh, Immediately after the offering, we're going to be favored with a special number by the, the Meads. All right. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for this season, Lord, where we remember and give thanks. Lord, take our thankfulness and, Lord, infuse it with your presence so that, Lord, we receive a greater infilling of your spirit. Lord, that our, our thankfulness turns into praise, which turns into change, which turns into multiplication of your kingdom. Lord, bless these tithes and offerings. As we give, Lord, we, we give generously with the anticipation that, Lord, you're going to use these gifts to multiply your kingdom in and through this church and the many ministries that we support. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord, extend your hand to each and every prayer request. Lord, these two, Lord, are an expression of your kingdom where your power and glory is manifesting in the lives of these people that we're praying for. Minister, Lord, your presence, your power, your healing, your wholeness. Bless Pastor Kurt as he brings the message this morning. Lord, let us hear the word with joy and gladness and be changed by it pray in Jesus' name. Amen. searching whose paths take them farther from home for the light of the sun upon everyone that leads to the foot of the throne and we pray for the battered and broken whose pain has surrounded their sight in the name of the one who gave us his son, so even the blind see his light. And Lord of light, Lord of might, through the night 
show the way It seems that the night is upon us And there's so many ways we can fall We will call on the name of the true living flame Who died bringing light to, to us all And I dreamt of us marching together And tearing the darkness away for the love of the one who gave us his son, so even the blind know the way. And Lord of light, Lord of might, through the night show the way. On and on, lead us on to the dawn. You're probably wondering, who are these amazing worshipers? Mark, <laughs> before you go, this is, yeah, amen, you can give my hand again. Come on out, guys. This is Mark Mead and his uh, family, two of his boys here. And you want to introduce them? And where's Lori? Lori, his wife. There she is. There's Lori. And you guys, you're... Joey. Joey and Mitchell. and Mitchell. And they are part of just the wonderful blessing that God has given to us here in the church. And we just thank the Lord for you guys. You. You now, you wrote that song, is that right? He wrote that song. Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. Good. Thank you. One of the many gifts we have here. Many of you are, all of you are gifts. We thank the Lord for you. And uh, when you have special gifts to offer the Lord, that's really awesome, really awesome. Well, good morning. It's good to be here today. Hopefully you had a good Thanksgiving time, both in gathering somewhere. Have a little less volume, guys as well as being able to be thankful um, wherever you were or at what the, at, on that day. Because as long as God is on the throne, we have something to be thankful for. And the last time I checked, he's always going to be on the throne. So we always have something to be thankful for. Amen? Amen. And we have to be able to remember that in times when our circumstances might want to tell us otherwise, we can come back to that truth, that, all, that eternal truth that God is always on the throne. Well, it's been an um, amazing series that we've been in. Uh, we've been in a series on the letter to the Romans, uh, calling it the power to live by faith. And uh, every part of it has just been an amazing uh, truths and revelation that we get uh, from God through uh, Paul as he wrote this. And then through the midst of it, um, we had Heidi graduating to heaven, and she gave us this part, Just Trust God. If you haven't written that down somewhere, you ought to write it down in a Bible because that's about as key a phrase and simplest form that you'll ever find. Just trust God. When things are going bad, 
just trust God. When things are going good, just trust God, and uh, he will take us through. So we have to remember that we live still in a fallen world, even though Jesus has won the victory. And we who are in Christ have the victory over the fallen world. It's just that the fallen world doesn't want to give up. Anybody else find that? I know I find that. The fallen world doesn't want to give up. And so we need to exercise that authority, the victory uh, that we have. This morning, I'd like to focus on the last two chapters of the book of Romans as we're coming to a conclusion on this series. Um, the first 11 chapters, just to recap a moment, the first 11 chapters really lay out for us the foundation of our faith the blessings that Jesus gave us and the gifts that he gave us, including the Holy Spirit. First 11 chapters. Chapters 12 through 15 really give us how we are to live life. How we are to live life. Last week, Pastor Joel spoke on what it means to live in harmony as believers. That's part of how we are to live life. Before that, he spoke on living under authority. And it's important to live under authority. Can I have a little less volume? Again, guys, there's a little ringing there. And then before that, Pastor Anita spoke on a renewed mind and a transformed life. See, all of these are about transformation of our lives because Jesus isn't just looking to help you along. He's looking to transform you. You know, your spirit has already been transformed. Your mind and your emotions have to catch up. Anybody understand what I'm saying there, okay? Your, your mind and your emotions have to catch up. Your spirit person has already been transformed. You are already an eternal living being. You are going to take one day, one step. When you breathe your last, you're going to breathe the next in heaven. But right now, while you're here on the earth, while you're walking out this life, you need to have your mind renewed, as it says in Romans 12, 1 and 2. And you have to do that part. Some of us wish God would do that part also, don't we? That's because we like the easy way. But today I want to focus on an aspect that Paul is emphasizing that flows out of chapter 14. And uh, if you turn with me to uh, chapter 15, <clears throat> I want to focus in on uh, chapter 15 for a bit. And I'm calling it the victory in loving others. The victory in loving others and winning more to Jesus. You know, the second part, let me just make mention of this. Paul had a continual desire to win more to Jesus. Has anybody ever noticed that in the scriptures? <clears throat> he didn't want to go and build churches, per se. He wanted to start churches. And it says everywhere he went, he set elders in place so that they could tend the church. But he always wanted to win one more. And, you know, my prayer for myself, and I hope for you too, is, God, I want to win one more. And after that, I want to win one more. And after that, I want to win one more. And we need to keep that in mind, that while we are on the earth, that's one of the greatest missions that we can do, is to win one more for Jesus. The more we go through the current days and times, and the world looks crazier and crazier, I believe that the call for us to be ready to lead a person to Christ at any moment is of utmost importance. Because people are wondering what's going on. Is there an answer? They've been told a lot of things that are just not true, including in schools where they've brainwashed our culture and society with regard to um, uh, not believing in God, when in reality he is the one that is uh, holding everything in his hands. Hebrews 11.1 1 says that he upholds all things in his hands. 11.1 1 or 11.2, he upholds all things. When I, when I read that, I think about the fact that when I look at the planets, he's upholding the planets in their perfect orbit. When I look at the earth, he's holding the earth in its perfect balance. Do you know it is statistically impossible for the earth to exist with the life and all the systems on it today? It is not statistically possible. The, the probability of all of the water being just right, all of the animals having the right systems, your body is a statistical improbability. 
There, tell that to yourself. I'm statistically not supposed to be here. If you think about all the systems in your body, the circulatory system, the, uh, the muscular system, the skeletal system, the brain system, the nervous system, if you said that ought to randomly happen, it, you can't statistically calculate anything that says you ought to be here. There only, it only points to one answer, that there is a God and there is a creator. And I love this morning that one song just really was catching me is, is where we were singing that he's worthy of it all, right? He's worthy of it all. Do you know worthy comes from the word worth? He's worth it. That's what we're saying when he's worthy. He is worth it. He is worth all of our praise. He is worth all of our glory that we can give to him. He is worth all of our life because he gave his life for us and there's nothing that we can give back to him that would be equal to that. Amen. He is worthy of it all. And so if we've gotten a hold of that in our own life, then we need to get a hold of the idea that other people need this likewise. Let me see if I can get this going here. That other people need to be able to realize that also. Yep. So I'll let you take that a minute. I mean, how many of you, when you were saved, when you were born again, there was a transformation that happened in your life? Huh? Now, some of you grew up in Christian families, and I know that, and that's wonderful, that's awesome. But some of us grew up in, in heathen pagan families, if I might say that. And so for us, it was a real shock when we got saved. A good shock. In fact, when I got born again, and it was such a radical experience for me, God should have put a piece of tape over my mouth for about the first year. Because one of the things I kept saying is, why did that certain church keep this from me so long? I went to church, never got this. And when I got it, it's like, now I'm really upset. <laughs> See, we got too much religion in America and not enough relationship. Jesus never came to bring religion. He brought us a relationship with him. And so chapter 15, as we look at it, is a continuation of chapter 14. And that is a continuation of Paul's writings about how we are to live life. And one of the very first parts of how to live life begins right in verse 1. And so you can look at that with me for a moment. Verse 1, and I, and I picked, even though I usually use a New King James uh, translation, but some of these are better explained in another translation. And so I picked this CEV, Contemporary English Version, for this for the moment, for a number of the verses from 1 down to 12. And here's how it starts. It says, if our faith is strong... We should be patient with the Lord's followers whose faith is weak. We should try to please them instead of ourselves. Now, first of all, when it says, if our faith is strong, the premise is, is your faith is supposed to be strong. If you've been saved more than a few days, your faith ought to be strong. If it's not, you need to relook at your faith again. If you've been coasting for the last 30 years, it's time to put your feet on the ground and your nose in the Bible and begin to get the revelation and truth you need to live by. Because it's not only for you to live, but it's for you to give to somebody else. I want to say and challenge this before, you know, everyone and before the Lord. You do not want to go to heaven without leading at least one person to Jesus Christ. Did you? I'm going to come over here. You don't want to go to heaven without leading one person to Jesus Christ. Some of you are going, did the pastor really say that? I did. You know, we have a wonderful gathering place. We have a wonderful church here. And as wonderful it is, this is not the end all. This is the launching point for every week as we gather. 
We are to be recharged, renewed, refreshed, and then launched again to go out and to be that, that living witness. You know, it's not that there's a, hey, you know, you got to believe in Jesus. What we've got to do is what verse 1 says is that, um, that if our faith is strong, we should be patient with the followers of faith and we should try to please them instead of ourselves. We should think of their good and try to help them by doing what pleases them. Now, he's speaking here to both Jewish people and to, um, and to Gentiles in Rome. And in the original context, what it's speaking about is the Gentiles were, and, and some of the Jewish people, were entering into the freedom that he wrote about back through the other chapters. And they are happy in the Lord. But there were some who were the Jewish people that were still kind of straddling, they're straddling the law, and I need to keep all of the law along with the freedom. And they're back and forth. And what it did was it made them weak. Because if you're trying to keep the law, you'll never be able to keep the law. Therefore, condemnation comes, comes upon you. But if you grasp what Jesus did for you and that he did it all and that you have salvation, that it's come to you by grace through faith, then you've got the freedom to be able to help somebody else. And that includes not only Jewish law, it includes the Christian law. What do I mean by that? Well, a lot of times we've come into a church after we've been born again and we begin to learn all the do's and don'ts that we must do this and we must do that. And, you know, some places you can't worship with instruments. You've got to worship with voices. And some places you've got to do this. And some places you've got to do that. And the pastor's nasty. And, you know, that's just Christian law again. We take them out of one law and we bring them into another law. We're not interested in doing that here. Jesus has bought our freedom. Therefore, our freedom is what we're going to live in. And the freedom that we've received from him, we want to give to others. Well, here's what it means then, beloved friends, is that if we've got a faith that is strong, and that includes being born again, if you want to be defining what strong means, born again, it means uh, even being filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, if you want to be strong, then that is awesome. That is great. But now what you're called to do is to go and serve others. You know, every believer in every church has got to walk in the light of the knowledge of the revelation that they have in that church. And we cannot throw a stone. That's not going to do any good. So what are we supposed to do, those that have been filled with the Holy Spirit? We're supposed to come alongside and we're supposed to come under them and to help them and to serve them and let them see there's really more. So we don't come at it from a perspective of, well, I'm higher because I have this revelation. That's not the way of Jesus. Jesus said that he came to serve and to be a servant of all. And so when we are, when we are growing in strength, we need to find out how we can serve somebody else. And that includes both believers, but it includes non-believers too. It includes your neighbor. It includes your neighbor. And we find that there in the scriptures. And so chapter 15, as I said, is that, that place where we can enter into, and let me just back up a moment, that where, where there's a joyful response to our salvation, and it, is, and it produces in us an accepting of others as they are, caring for others, loving God with all that we can, and then to love our neighbor as ourself. Didn't Jesus say the greatest two commandments are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength? And the second is equal to it, to love your neighbor as yourself? He said those are the greatest two, and he said that in those two, if you do them, you fulfill all of the law. Wow. That's amazing. And so... We need to be able to think of, of, of even reaching out to our neighbor, especially at this time of year uh, as we come into the Christmas season. Listen, it is the most um, uh, significant time where people are the most open to talking about Jesus. Whether you talk about him from, you know, a little baby in the manger 
or whether you talk to, talk to them about the ultimate goal, which is to help them to realize that Jesus came for them. There are things that you can use to help you to do that. That's why we have those invitations out there. That's why I want you to take a bunch of them. I really don't want to see them there. I want to see them gone, and I don't mean thrown away. I want to see them taken and used to the neighbors or to the people that you are around. Invite them because we're going to be sharing about hope and joy and love and peace during the Sundays of uh, December. So Jesus Christ wants you to have a joy-filled life with his peace and his righteousness. We find that in chapter 14 and chapter 15. But after you're born again, which is the greatest thing you can have, your joy and your peace is going to come from serving others. If you're a Christian, you're called to serve others. Can I get an amen to that? If you're a Christian, it's not about me anymore. Yeah, God is interested in you. But number one, he's interested in what is he able to do through you. If he can get it to you and through you, there's going to be a wonderful blessing that comes. And so I want to encourage you, even in this days now, the week that we have, weeks here uh, till the end of the year, start being in prayer for somebody that you can reach out to. Start being. I mean, it, it ultimately is about winning people to Jesus. You know, we can, we can be in church, you know, every Sunday and other days, But ultimately, Jesus isn't so interested in that. He's interested in what we're doing with the salvation that we have. And so we have this thought that we must start with others and not ourselves if we want to really experience the joy and the victory that there is. Because there is a victory in loving others. There is a victory that happens. When you love somebody else, you know what? You destroy the ability of that person to be able to hate you. Did you know that that if somebody hates you and you love them, you can't have a fight? Somebody's just not going to cooperate. Well, I love you. No, I'm fighting against you. No, I just love you anyway. And you know what? The flesh doesn't say that. It's got to come from the Spirit. We have to be able to let the Holy Spirit just rise up in us and say, no, I'm going to choose to love that one. Maybe it's a family member, maybe it's a friend, maybe it's a neighbor. But if you begin to ask the Lord to help you to love that one, you will find the doors will open, the gates will open, the opportunity to be able to reach people is going to be phenomenal. And so we have to get out of our comfort zone and begin to say, Lord, I want to do that. I want to be able to love and I want to see the victory in loving others. Another important thing about loving others is the fact that um, that by loving others and loving one another here in the church is that there is a unity that gets that gets uh, that gets produced. The Holy Spirit loves to produce unity. It's Psalm 133 talks about how beautiful it is for those the brothers who walk together in unity. But here is a thought: as we were listening to the worship team this morning, were they in unity? Were they all the same? No. They're different instruments, different people, doing slightly different things at any given second, but they were in perfect unity and they produce a perfect harmony. Where there is unity, God commands, it says, his blessing in Psalm 133. You look it up. God commands his blessing. He doesn't just add a little bit. He commands his blessing upon that group. And so unity, which is what the Holy Spirit loves to produce, unity will release something that allows God to command his blessing over the individuals as well as over the place, which is here at Hopewell. Let's read on. Um, Let me go ahead. Uh, There's three, three things, three major things that that I see that the Lord is speaking through, through what Paul wrote here. And one we've already talked about, and that is the stronger in faith and knowledge of God, um, they need to, to help those that are weaker 
and we need to love our neighbor. And I've mentioned that one already. The second thing is the Holy Spirit loves to produce caring and unity and like-mindedness. See, that does, God doesn't want us to give up who we are or our identity, but he wants us to be of like mind together. You know, we can't go the same direction if there's, you know, different ones going different directions. You know, that's what a shepherd uh, in the uh, Bible times was. It was when the shepherd went, walked a certain direction, the sheep followed. And that's the only way it works with sheep, by the way. I don't know if you've ever worked with sheep. But you can lead them, but you cannot drive them. If you've ever messed with sheep and you try to drive them, you've got chaos. They're going to go in 10 different directions. But if they know the shepherd and they know the sound of the voice, the shepherd can walk along and the sheep will follow. It's interesting, that's how Jesus used the analogy in the scriptures that we have today. So the stronger need to be able to help the weaker. And as we do that, we want to also be able to love our neighbor and love our, our, um, our brothers too. The second one I mentioned, the Holy Spirit produces a caring and a unity and a like-mindedness in us. The third one, the Holy Spirit produces the power to draw others to Christ. So as we're talking about today, the subject about the victory of loving others, when you are walking in the Spirit, when you are walking as a son or daughter of the Most High God, there is something that comes off of your life. There is something that people sense. Or I'll say it the other way. Have you ever been around somebody that is uh, really in a negative mode, right? They're really, their words, they're, the whole atmosphere. You ever sense that? And it's like, can I please leave now, right? Well, if that's true, and that's the counterfeit, then the other is true that when we are in God in a very strong way, and, and the presence of God is in our life, something is given off to the people that are around us. You know, that people just want to be around a person that has the Holy Spirit operating in them. They're just positive. They're, they can see the victories even when things are, you know, going crazy. And so we need to be focusing on that. We need to be pressing in even more so that we can walk in that way where the Holy Spirit is just living and active and moving in our, in our life. Let me go on. So the stronger ones, as I mentioned, need to help those that are weaker. And we need to continually come back to that on occasion. I've read the scriptures from Romans chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. If our faith is strong, we should be patient with the Lord's followers whose faith is weak. We should try to please them instead of ourselves. We should think of their good and try to help them by doing what pleases them. Even Christ did not try to please himself, but as the scriptures say, the people who insulted you also insulted me. It's quoting an Old Testament scripture of God. And so we need to be that, that's the, in the stronger place to help others. We need to also be in that place where the Holy Spirit produces that unity and like-mindedness. And we find that in verses 5 through 7. It says there that God, if I'm in the right one, God is the one who makes us patient and cheerful. I pray that he will help you live at peace with each other as you follow Christ. Then all of you together will praise God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Honor God by accepting each other as Christ has also accepted you. So the second point, as I had mentioned, the Holy Spirit produces this unity by us choosing to love one another and to love those that are our neighbors, those that are our brothers and sisters here in, in the church. And as we do that, we find that unity produces then a joy and a gladness that, that rises up before God. And then the third thing, as I mentioned, the Holy Spirit gives us the power and the unity to draw others to Jesus. Romans 15, verses 8 and 9 says, For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the Jews on behalf of God's truth, so that the promises made to the patriarchs might be confirmed. 
And moreover, the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. What Paul is reminding us, and he does that through the book, is that Jesus came for both the Jews and the Gentiles. He came for both. There's still only one way to Jesus. I mean, one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. There's no second way. There's no third way. There's a lot of uh, uh, things that I just see being posted out there in the internet that is false. And, you know, you have to be ready and able to determine what is false and what is true. Because we are living in a day of a lot of false information. Can I get an amen to that? And it's not only misinformation, but it's disinformation. What's the difference? Well, misinformation is information that happens to accidentally be wrong. Disinformation is information that is intentionally wrong to be misleading. And we're living in a day where both of those are out there, and especially against those that are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. But the Holy Spirit, it says back in John, will lead us, will guide us. He's the one who will show us the truth. And so as he shows us the truth, we can walk uh, in that truth together. The victory also comes through the Holy Spirit who gives us this verse in Romans fifteen thirteen, And it's one of my favorite verses that I love to declare. It says, Now, one tr- may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So let me ask you, does God want you to be filled with joy? I'm going to say it again. Does God want you to be filled with joy? Does he want you to be filled with hope? Does he want you to be filled with peace? It comes out of knowing him in that intimate way. And so if we're walking around, you know, kind of glum and down, it usually means that we're not operating in what God has for us, but we're operating in what the enemy has trying to throw against us. And you know, his stuff is like, um, didn't they, what was that stuff years ago? I'm probably dating myself. Was it like a sticky string or something like that where you sprayed it out of a can? What was it called? What is it again? Okay. And you know how it sticks to you? Well, you know, what the enemy throws at you doesn't go in you, it sticks to you. That means you can peel it off. That means you can take what the enemy throws at you and say, I'm not going to receive that today or any other day. My God says that he is the God of hope. He fills me with all joy and peace as I trust in him so that I may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to reverse Things like discouragement. How many experience discouragement, right? How many, how about sorrow? Anybody, you know, experience sorrow? Discord, disharmony, and worry. That's what the enemy wants to fill you with. But what God wants to fill you with is peace and joy and hope because he is still on the throne of heaven. So how do you deal with that? Because that's an everyday part of life. Well, first of all, identify the fact that it's not yours, it's not of you when you're down, and nor is it of God. That's a good starting point. Because we think, well, God just sends this stuff at me, and, you know, it's teaching me a lesson to be humble, and, you know. I think that's an insult to God. His word says, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow. Say overflow. Overflow. With hope. Say hope. Hope. By the power of the Holy Spirit. You say, "I I have the power of the Holy Spirit. Because he's in me. If I'm a believer, I've received Jesus, but I've received the Holy Spirit. He's operating in me. He's going to give me joy. He's going to give me peace. He's going to fill me up. 
Let's deal with the other side. How about this? Say, I renounce discouragement. I renounce, discouragement. I renounce sorrow. I renounce, sorrow. I renounce discord. I renounce disharmony. I renounce worry in the name of Jesus. And those things must go right now in Jesus' name out of my life. I let them go. I don't hold on to them anymore. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me for holding on to them. And now I release them. And I receive your joy. I receive your peace. How many felt something shift and change there? Amen? We just got rid of that sticky string or whatever it's called. That the enemy, silly string, whatever it's called. That's the real part of the scriptures. God, oh, God responds to his word. And that is, we, we need to keep coming back to that from, from reminding ourselves. You know, he responds to our prayer, but even more than our prayer, he responds to his word. When we begin to put ourselves into his word, it's like we are taking a step into the word, and the word is filling us, and the word is around us, and the enemy cannot get to us because we've stepped into God in his word. So why do you think the enemy wants to keep you busy in the day we're living in so you don't read the word? Why do you think he brings all kinds of distractions because you won't read the word? And not only read the word, you need to memorize the word. You need to feed your spirit. You know, we feed our bodies three times a day. How many times do you feed your body the word of God? Some of you are going on a few years. No wonder you look malnourished. Your spirit's withering away because you haven't been feeding it. You know, I'm making fun, but I'm serious also. The word of God is what we need to live by. Jesus himself said that when he was tempted, that it's the word. Jesus used the word three times to destroy the temptation of the devil. If you read it in Matthew... All three times he quoted the word because Jesus in that case was the word as well as the word being in him. For us, when we are in Christ, we step into the word and we use the word as the very life that we live. And that's why the word has got to be so important to us. I love all of the availability that we have in our, in our hands and in our, in our phones and whatever, but, but ultimately it's got to get from the phone from there to here. It's even got to go past your brain because it's not what you think about the word, it's what you have gotten a revelation of of the word. When you can say, I know that I know that I know that I know it's true, you've got the devil beat every single time. If you don't, he's going to play a battle with your mind. That's what a lot of times happens is the enemy plays, a, you know, gives us the battle of the mind, especially in the area of distractions. And so, if we receive this, Romans 15, 13, we have a solid foundation where we can go, the God of hope fills me with all joy and peace as I trust in him. And I thank you, Lord, for doing that. I thank you that I overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, I know the situations can be bad, but it doesn't matter. I'm reading the word and I'm standing on what the word of God says. I know that I may not have all those things that I need, but it doesn't matter. I'm standing on what the Word of God says. He will fill me with all joy and peace. Even in disasters, He will fill me with all joy and peace. Listen, brothers and sisters, if you go around the world, they have little to nothing in so many nations, and yet they have the Word of God, and they stand on the Word of God. They worship Jesus. They worship God because that's all they have. We've got so much, it distracts us. So let's come back to that, that word, the importance of the word of God. Also, what does the Holy Spirit do in this? He gives us the power to win others to Jesus. He gives us the power 
Yeah, to win more to Jesus. We need to be more ready with our testimony than ever before. Because you can try and debate somebody in the world we're living in, and you can only go so far. But when you say, but here's my testimony. I was living like this. I was headed for a crash. I was headed for hell. I was headed for a bad life. But when Jesus stepped in my life, this is how it got turned around. See, they have a hard time refuting the fact that you have a testimony. It's more than just what you do in church. It's what you do out in the community. It's what you do in your neighbor's house. They are hungry and they don't know it. We're living in a day where people have been, been, been so, so they're, they're, I, I just sense that they're, they're so desperate for, you know, make me feel good. That's what we have on television. A lot of so-called evangelistic preachers. It's a make me feel good message time. Happy meals. Because the world is hurting. There's a very real need. And so we need to be ready in the season that we're living in, coming into this Christmas season, to be able to show love to them, to be able to go low when they need someone to go low with them, to do the extra for a neighbor, to do the extra for a friend, to do an extra for a brother or sister. This is what Paul is getting to in chapter 15. He started out talking about the strong, and we all need to be the strong, can help the weak. He goes on and talks about that the Holy Spirit will give us the patience and comfort. He goes on to to clarify the fact that Jesus came for the Jews as well as for the Gentiles. He clarified in verse 13 that God gives us, he's the God of hope who fills us. He then goes on and talks about the travels that he's planning to do. But if you look with me for a moment down in verse 19 of chapter 15, it says there that Paul never ceased operating with the signs and wonders and the miracles. It says, in word and deed to make the Gentiles obedient or to bring them to salvation, in mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem to roundabout Elycrium, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. And so I have made it my aim to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named. Wow, that's an amazing thing. He says that, you know, I'm, I'm not even wanting to go where the, he's already been preached. I want to go completely somewhere else. I want to go to an unreached people group, as we use the term today. And so I've made it my aim to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named or preached, lest I should, I should um, build on another man's foundations. And then he talks about going to Rome and and uh, what his plans are. But I want to tell you, this, this letter doesn't just kind of, we think of the ending, we think of, well, it's an ending of a letter, and so therefore he's kind of winding down. I don't see that when I read it. I think he's winding up. I think what he's saying is, listen, my brothers and, fr- and, and, my brothers and sisters in Rome, I'm telling you something. Love those that are around you. Be able to win people to Christ by the Holy Spirit. Be able to be renewed and refreshed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen, I'm planning to visit Rome. You go and plan to visit other places too so that you can win people to Christ. He's not winding down. He's just winding up. And then we find over in chapter 16, this beautiful closing. And again, I see him just stirring up the saints here. There's about 30 different saints that he, that he names in, in chapter 16. Let's go on. Oop. He names about 30 different saints. Oop, let's go back. Oop, I'm not going back the right way. Now I'm going back. No. Anyway, guys, you're going to have to. (laughs) Chapter 16, he names about, you can turn it off. He names about 30 different saints. And I want to point this out. You can turn that off. That nine of those 30 are women. One third of the saints that that he greets 
are women leaders in the church at Rome. They have house churches. They are leading people. They are, they are serving the Lord. They are serving Paul. They're serving others. Women have a place in ministry that has been robbed from them for many years. And it comes from a wrong understanding of Paul and what he has written before. The church would not be today, I believe, going back to the early church, where it is today if there were not women who were also messengers, evangelists, and even all the five-fold ministry going on. And right now we can find it around the world. There are apostles in China, over 10,000 churches that are women. God doesn't have a problem with it. Man likes to create the problems. It's like if we don't have enough already, we'll create some more. So I'm not preaching a gospel here or a message here that aligns with women's lib or anything of that kind. That's totally not of God. And, and I got totally misunderstood one time. So maybe there'll be somebody. On, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that God calls women also into ministry. They have gifts, they have callings, and we need their ministry as well as the ministry of men. I believe there is a role of male headship, so to speak, but that does not in any way eliminate women from serving in ministry. Some of you might be going, yeah, but that's because his wife is a pastor. No, I would be preaching the same thing if my wife wasn't a pastor. You got that? And we have many here who serve uh, in, in roles of ministry, um, and I'm very, very thankful uh, for that. Paul concludes chapter 16 with this powerful blessing because Paul was always looking to bless. He blessed those who were walking according to the word and he always was looking to bless. So let's look at this at the end of chapter 16. He says, Now to him, is talking about God, who is able to establish you meaning to set you in place, meaning to build you up, meaning to just make you a very strong uh, believer, according to my gospel, according to the gospel of salvation in Jesus Christ, and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery. What's the mystery? The mystery that he refers to continually is that before this point in time, the Gentiles were not made uh, able to be a part of what God was doing. And now, from the beginning of time, God always intended to bring the Gentiles also into his kingdom. That's the mystery that heretofore has not been revealed, but now has been revealed. It's been kept secret since the world began, but now made manifest and by the prophetic scriptures made known to all the nations, all the nations, not just America, according to the commandment of the everlasting God for the obedience to faith to God alone who is wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. He blesses the people of Rome. Let me have the worship team come up as we close. Paul was a blesser. That's been our theme for this year also. Blessed to be a blessing for 2017. You're not blessed so you can get more. You're blessed so you can give away more. You're not just blessed so that you can enjoy. That's good, but you're blessed to be able to serve others, to be able to help others, to be able to bring unity together as we continue to... Uh, to, to walk together. And I, and I believe that there's a powerful spiritual truth in what I'm, what I'm sharing today, that there really is a victory. There is a victory that is won when we do, in fact, love others that are around us. Even the ones that feel we feel sometimes might be hard to love. You know, God didn't say whether they're easy or hard to love, love them. And so therefore, everybody qualifies to be loved. Amen? Amen? Let's stand together as we close this morning.
I want to ask the ministry team to come up. So this morning, maybe as you hear this word, first of all, you might be saying, you know, I'm, I'm really struggling with that. And maybe it needs to start with, do you know Jesus as your Savior? Because once we know him, it changes everything. It changes how we look at life. It changes how we approach situations. But then maybe you're born again and you say, but I'm still struggling with that. You know what? The Holy Spirit wants to fill you with peace and joy. He wants to remove what we were talking about before and removing. He wants you to be free to be able to serve others and to be able to bring blessing to others. And so take a moment and just look at, into your heart. Say, if there's anything there that the Lord is, is dealing with or is pointing to, I want to ask you to just take a step. Come on up here to pray with one of the team members here, whether it's a first-time faith that you're coming to Jesus, whether it's a renewing of your faith and you're coming to Jesus. Whether there's burdens that you've been letting just hold you back and you want to get rid of them, just come on up. Jesus wants to release those from you. So let's do that. Feel free to come forward as we close in this song and then we'll dismiss. Thank you for the cross that you have carried. Thank you for your blood that was shed. It took the weight of sin upon your shoulders. The sacrifice of life so I could live. And nothing, no, nothing is holding me back from Going to take a moment, release parents to go pick up children now so that uh, the teachers can be free. But you can stay in this worship. We're just going to continue on a little bit longer. Thank you. Thank you for your death and resurrection. Thank you for the power of your. your love surrounds us like your presence, Lord. That where we go, you are always with us, and so your love also surrounds us. Lord, I pray for that one today that, that has felt just somehow disconnected from you. And yet, Lord, you have a relationship with them. Lord, I pray now for a freedom to step into that relationship, oh God. Lord, a freedom that has already been won for them. Lord, that every lie of the enemy would be thrown off like a yoke that is thrown off and that you would walk, that person would walk in your light 
in your peace, in your joy, Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Lord. I felt earlier that the Lord was also giving me two words uh, regarding healing, some words of knowledge. And one was for a rash, I think in, in your neck or your upper body there. Uh, if that's you, just take and say, Lord, I receive that healing word right now. Just receive that. Uh, another one had to do with a liver or internal organ area. And so if the Lord's speaking that, he wants to heal that. He is Yahweh Rapha, the Lord God, our healer. And so take and receive that right now. Receive that healing that he has for you right now in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. We bless you, Lord, for that now. Thank you that you are the mighty one. And we bless you as you go with us now today. And we thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you go today. If you need prayer, please come on up and receive prayer.